Hi right, guys, uh, Uncle Bob here again. Uh, as I contemplate uh, jumping into the uh, DT02 speed challenge that uh, Peter Smith over at CW01 Creations is putting on, uh, I decided to break out my Trinity Triad, tried and true, uh, man turn motor, but realized it needed a little maintenance. Um, so. I decided to break out my huddy lathe and uh, I figured this is more of intermediate to professional style type stuff. Uh, it, it's not hard to do, uh, but it can ruin things if you're not careful. Um, first things first, uh, on this setup. I have these little clamps that will sit there and go over the motor shaft and that will keep it from bouncing up and down and popping out of the grooves. Not everyone has them, uh, they usually are held in with a belt around the stacks. Um, so that's a good feature. Uh, the other thing is, is I had to bust out some shims. and. Uh, because you don't want the motor to rock back and forth and you really don't want too much on this would probably be the better end to put it on honestly just to keep the edge of the, the commutator from scraping on that so that limits the end plate just a little bit I'm going to put the original shim off the motor on the output side of the shaft where it came from that's a lot better okay now the other thing is on your cutting bit and now I hope you can see this there's the armature shaft let me try to get this light a little better and there's the cutting tool you want that cutting tool to be slightly higher than the center line on the commutator otherwise you're going to end up with chatter and that could uh, that will definitely uh, gouge into the copper on the commutator and you don't want that um, the purpose of this is to true the com so it doesn't have any big dips or basically high sides and low sides you, you want to try to make it as smooth as possible so let me hook up the machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got everything set up. Um, got the power supply set to five volts because that's all you really need for this. Um, now hopefully I don't, I hope this motor is still good. I mean, it's years old and it's been used because I bought this, this used. But uh, that's at five volts. I got the uh, O-ring on to spin this. I got it clamped down, but not too tight, so it's got movement, not drawing too many amps. Turn it on, and good to go. Now what I like to do is I like to take a black Sharpie, and just color the cam. It adds a little lubricant, and well, let me turn this off and bring it up. Show you that it that is blackened when you can't really see in there. Dang this light. I go grab my phone. I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed my phone so I could turn on the flashlight. You can see that the com is colored black. Okay, and that's also going to give you a reference of how much you're cutting and taking it off. Uh, obviously, the ink from the marker is not very thick. So that's going to help with that. So let me uh, get it set up. I'll be right back. All right. Where did I leave off? Um, a big uh, two-year, five-month-old uh, battery is uh, NFG. Uh, so I got a 3S hooked up. And I need to uh, see if this is going to work without getting my fat head in the way. And... Keep everything in frame so you can see. All right, so here we go. See if that turns on. 
everything's still set up as it was. It seems to be working. And it doesn't seem to be working very good. And battery voltage is low. Well, shit. Alright guys, here we are again. I'm trying to uh, get this to just barely touch. And sounds like my power supply is dying. Well, guys, broke the drive belt, so I can't uh, can't finish this. But let me uh, rework this and get it a little closer. Okay, fortunately for me, I had another belt. Uh, but let me uh, pull this out real quick. I want to show you something. Before I continue, can you see the dark spots, which are the Sharpie, compared to the freshly cleaned copper parts? Let me uh, try to get into the light a little bit better here. I don't know how well that's coming across on camera. I mean, I'm looking through the viewfinder, but... That tells me that uh, years of the motor sitting around with the spring pressure on the brushes up against the com has actually sunk a little bit. And it does happen, I've seen it happen. It doesn't happen a lot, but it happens. Uh, it, uh, that explains the high and low spots here. So let me continue. All right, guys. Um, with the belt breaking and the power supply issues, I managed to get it to, to get done. Don't know if you can see that. It's it's not the best, but there's no more high or low spots on there. Now to clean it and put it back together. All right. This is what I use to clean it out seems to work pretty good so I'll use that now all I gotta do is reassemble the motor and uh, go from there so wrong spacer Bob proper spacer damn it all right I had to use the Rob Brennan trick and Lick my finger to pick up that shim. That's that one. And I believe that's that one. All right. I forgot to do one thing. After uh, after cleaning the motor, got to put the drop of. Uh, lubrication on the bearings and yes I've already done my uh, align the hoods and, and the bearings so I already got I already went ahead and did all that while I was doing other things so drop a bearing oil in there um, And now, I need to figure out which side is which here. Okay, positive on that side. All right. So, and the dog's going to be making squeaky noises, as you can probably hear. 
All right. No timing marks on this, but if you see uh, little marks like this on the end bell or on the can that line up with the mount holes on the end bell, that's pretty much zero timing. This one is not. This one seems to be off a little bit. That could be sticker. No, that's not sticker placement. Anyway, uh, the one uh, tab or brushes should be, let's just say it, brushes should be in about the center of each magnet on either side. So that'll give you a reference on zero timing. Uh, let me get this end bell snug down and I will verify that. Because I'm not done with it yet. I still got to check end play, and that's tighter than a witch's. All right, let me be right back. Let me uh, shim this up. Okay, if all is done right, this should be at zero timing. Let me stick it in here. This screw for the, on this tab or in between. This is the positive on this side that I always reference motors when I do them and that should be right there because there is a little slot on the end bell and the brushes are all in line oh that's not working that way hold on people that's a little tight in there there is a there is a line and two reference holes down at the bottom and that will also tell you if you have it lined up for zero timing. I don't know if you can see that. I can't even see it. I'm looking at it through the, trying to look at it through the monitor. But there, there's the line between the two mounting holes. That reference zero timing on the rig. And as you can see, the end bell is not at zero timing. And there we are, that's zero timing. Now you can tighten up these tabs. The zero timing is always the best place to start because if you need more RPM, you could always readjust it. Now, a couple of things I forgot to mention. After you're done, shaving your com and truing it up do not touch it with your fingers the acids and the grease and the oil from your fingers will contaminate the copper don't touch it um, and the other thing is is when you go to shim it you want a little bit of end play but an old trick was is to put it together without any shims pull it pull it and push it back and forth to see where it centers and that's the sweet spot for the motor for efficiency and power another little trick uh, so all that's good uh, let me get it fired up I'll be right back all right guys try to get, keep everything in frame here all right so let me see motor test enter voltage setting Let's take it up to 7.5, which is going to be roughly the voltage, more or less, of a fully charged nickel metal hydride or even a 2S light bulb. Uh, so let's hit enter. I want to call that 29,000 RPM. It's 29.3. Almost 30,000. And as you notice, I didn't change the brushes yet. I don't know if I'm going to. I've got 
So, yeah, pretty happy with that. So that's, uh, that'll work. Motor's ice cold. I mean, literally, it's cold. So, that's a rebuilt nine turn. Um, again, I don't know if I'm going to put uh, new brushes in it or not. And that's at zero timing, folks. Um, I could probably get a little more out of it with uh, with advancing the timing. But, you know, when you advance the timing, that creates more draw. And the more advanced the timing is, the less torque the motor produces. Sometimes you need the torque to get off the line. So, I'm happy with that. Now I got the 10 turn and the 12 turn. Yes, I'm missing two of them. I'm missing the 11 and the 13 turn. But I'm on the lookout for them. So, that's just uh, those three. I'm very happy with the results of this. Um, I wish the lathe was cooperating enough for me to actually record it. But it is what it is. Um, again, this is more advanced stuff when you try to shave a com. And when you do, or even if you take a motor apart, do not touch the commutator. The commutator. Uh, oils from your finger contaminate the copper or, or get oils on it. And then you got a barrier between the brushes and the com itself. So, I'm happy with this. Almost 30,000 RPM. And, uh, gee. This is an old motor. It's got to be a. I think they came out in what, 89? And only ran to like 90, 91, maybe? I don't know. Uh, they haven't been, they weren't around very long. But anyway, guys, have a good day. Good week, good month, good year. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Till then, take it easy. <laughs>